What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and when Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time was on the way, people were getting super duper excited for the plot. It seemed like Entropy was going to take over and be the main villain. It looked like they were gearing up to do some crazy timeline and alternate universe stuff to explain the post-Naughty Dog games. And the stakes seemed pretty high. I mean, erasing and rewriting the timeline? That's some Zamasu stuff. And then the game finally came out, and while the game itself was fantastic, the gameplay, the level design, the music, pretty much everything that counts in a game being great, some were disappointed by the story, myself included. Now the story was good, it just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Entropy turned out to not be the main villain, I mean, he kinda was, but he got overthrown way too easily. That new mysterious Entropy character wasn't the leader of Entropy's race, or some more powerful being. It was just a gender bend for a quick laugh at Entropy flirting with himself. And they didn't really explain the other games in the franchise. It really felt like they were trying to retcon them and wipe them from existence, despite having a few easter eggs and references towards them throughout levels. Now again, I do think the story of Crash Bandicoot 4 is very good and very fun. But I also personally think it plays it a bit too safe. So does Crash Bandicoot need a heftier story, something more serious or more detailed? Let's discuss. Now my mindset when it comes to this is that Crash Bandicoot has always been inspired by cartoons and western animation and has followed it throughout time. For example, in the 90s when Crash began, he was inspired by Looney Tunes and the Looney Tunes inspired cartoons of that same period, like Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, Tasmania, etc. And then as we go into the 2000s and the post Naughty Dog games, Crash sort of developed this fourth wall breaking, wacky insane humor. Stuff like Phineas and Ferb, maybe Chowder, Chowder kind of pushes it really far, but you know what I mean. I've talked about all this before. Basically, I was expecting that since we're getting a modern Crash Bandicoot story, and we haven't had a Crash story in the past decade or so, that this new one would take inspiration from cartoons coming out in the past decade and that are still going on now. Like Adventure Time, OKKO, OK Infinity Train, Gravity Falls. You know, where it's still entertaining and fun and wacky like a cartoon should be, but it's also more detailed and depth and well fleshed out. Because cartoons now are capable of so much more than they've ever been before. Now I'm not implying that Crash Bandicoot has to tackle real world problems or heavy topics that some of these cartoons are tackling. I'm just saying I would be completely comfortable if a Crash Bandicoot story were to ever make me cry. But yeah, while Crash Bandicoot 4's story does feel like a modern cartoon, it's one of the super safe modern cartoons that no one remembers, like GarageBand. Anyone remember GarageBand? It's not like they didn't come close though, they did have a huge opportunity with Tana Bandicoot. They just kind of missed it. She supposedly has trauma from whatever went down in her timeline, but it doesn't really ever show. Like, it makes her want to fly solo so no one else gets hurt, but she teams up with Dingo Dial. She doesn't want Crash and Coco to know that they died in her universe, but then openly tells them that she doesn't want to lose them again right to their faces later on in the game, but then also acts surprised and all, no, when female Entropy explains what happened to Crash and Coco. Even though Tana herself pretty much said or heavily implied what happened right to Crash and Coco's faces in the cutscene before. And then there's some stuff that they didn't even touch, like the fact that the original Tana is still out there missing somewhere. Or, of course, Crash and Tana's relationship. One of the biggest reasons people want Tana back in the main series. Their Roger and Jessica Rabbit dynamic was so cute and we wanted to see more of it, man, come on. I know Crash can't talk, so Coco and Aku Aku have to do all the plot and story exposition for him, but they have some fantastic animators on their team, especially in regards to facial animation, so Crash could say a ton with just his eyes alone. There could have been some really sweet and tender scenes with Crash and Tana by themselves, Crash helping her get over her trauma by getting to interact with them again, and also just developing them. But sadly, Coco and Aku Aku just had to be there the entire time to speak for Crash, when Crash could have easily said a ton by himself with just his facial expressions. Anyways, the overall point was there was a ton that they could do with this Tana and her trauma, but they just didn't and played it way too safe. If Dingo Dial can swear, then Tana can make us cry. Come on, Toys for Bob, just go for it. It's not just this new Tana, though. There's plenty of stuff in the Crash Bandicoot franchise that could use some exploring. For example, Nina Cortex. Did you know she used to be completely normal and she just loved to pet cute and cuddly animals? So innocent. But of course, Cortex didn't like that, so he took off her hands and replaced them with those super powerful robot hands so she can no longer hold cuddly animals without crushing them to death. Yeah, believe it or not, that's actually Nina lore from Crash to Insanity, but you'd never know unless you read the manual. 
In a new Crash game, they could actually dive into this lore and flesh out her character and talk about how she feels about all this. Like, no wonder she overthrows Cortex so much, or no wonder she's so quick to help Crash save the world. Even if she's not technically a hero, she clearly doesn't like her uncle and will take every opportunity to rebel against him. So it'd be really neat to explore that more. I'd also like to see a story arc with Crunch. You know, something similar to Cyborg from Teen Titans regarding him being part robot. Perhaps we could also get flashbacks of Cortex and his clown family before they all horrifically blew up. Yeah, that's a thing too. The thing I'm most excited and most hoping to see in the future though is the origins of Aku Aku and Uka Uka. In the original trilogy, we're led to believe that they are the most powerful beings in the universe, Aku Aku being the embodiment of good, and Uka Uka being the embodiment of evil. But then in Crash Bash, we get the mention of the Ancients not allowing them to fight, and then the Elementals come later, and now we have the Quantum Masks, and Velo has a mask for some reason. But anyways, not only does this show that there's more to the masks than we initially thought, but there's also the fact that Aku Aku and Uka Uka used to be human, and they were just reincarnated into these masks. Like, what made them so great as mere mortal humans that they got the privilege of being reincarnated into these super powerful cosmic mask beings? And what caused them to go to war so intensely that they continue their brotherly feud after death, and use Crash and Cortex as their personal pawns? And is it possible for them to ever reconcile? Because I'm sure they weren't always this angry at each other. Just questions, questions, questions. There's so much lore that the Crash Bandicoot franchise could flesh out in the future, and I really hope they jump into it soon. A personal wish I have with Crash Bandicoot taking more risks with its story is that I want to see something genuinely disturbing. I'm just a fan of spooky stuff, okay? Like Mila's secret room in Psychonauts, that whole fun is infinite thing in Sonic CD, the dead hands in Legend of Zelda, Gygus in Earthbound. These rated E games can handle it. I just want to see something from Crash end up on one of those top 10 scariest things in non-horror video games lists. Like, let us explore whatever lab Dingo Dial was created. It's abandoned, creepy, full of failed fusion experiments. All these horrific animal fusions and hybrids just crawling around and not looking quite right. Or maybe we could go and check out present day Cortex Castle. It's abandoned too, since Cortex mostly hangs out in iceberg labs or space stations now. And in the abandoned Cortex Castle, we're subtly followed by or haunted by the ghosts of failed Evolvo Ray Animal War experiments. Going off of memory here, but according to Crash 4, Crash is like Subject 219 or something, which means 218 experiments failed before him. So many lost and disturbed dead Bandicoot souls just floating around in that empty dark castle, just <laughs> But yeah, I think I made my point. Crash Bandicoot 4's story just played it really, really safe when there's so much they could do with it. So hopefully when the next Crash Bandicoot game comes around, it takes lots of notes from modern cartoons and what they're able to do. But what do you guys think? Should Crash have a more serious story, or are you fine with how it is now? Let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time. Leopold the Brave, out.